Jumbo Bunch! Line. <clears throat> so, welcome to another episode of Welcome to the Punchline. Um, this time, another kind of scratch premise. This one will be about college myths, or maybe college preconceptions. So, well, I had all these ideas about college, as far as like college classes before entering. I went to school for engineering, and growing up, I saw the movie Terminator 2 when I was very young, and seeing that robotic skeleton, the hand, that kind of thing, that just, I mean, I really saw that and was like, oh, I want to make stuff like that, that's really cool. And then I used to watch, like, cartoons and stuff like that, like the Jetsons, and see, like, a spaceship folding up into a briefcase, and obviously it being a cartoon, but me being a kid not knowing any better, thinking, oh, well, that would be cool, I want something like that, I want to make something like that. So... <laughs> When I joined college, I I assumed there'd be classes like Robotic Arm 101 or Make Your Vehicle Into a Briefcase 101, something like that, in like all engineering. Because, I mean, I guess in high school I was told that, oh, science, math, you should be an engineer or be in the sciences. And knowing that engineering generally was building that kind of thing, I thought that any engineering would do that. I guess I did <laughs> I was an idiot for not doing much research. Technically, that'd probably be more of a mechanical engineer. But obviously, the one thing I have is like just totally unrealistic expectations of college of the classes I would be taking. Basically, I thought the end product would be a class in itself. Like I think there'd be like Invisibility Cloak 101 or Introduction to Spring-Loaded Punching Glove, something like that. <laughs> That's kind of a simple joke right there. Just the exaggeration of thinking of all these cartoon physics and cartoon inventions in the real world is impractical because I mean how are you going to be folding up a giant sized ship, family sized ship into a briefcase who knows in the future maybe that's possible but <laughs> right now if you said that to like an engineering professor they just look at you and tell you to switch majors or something and we're back so maybe the whole thing about everyone in I mean, it's not untrue that uh, people in college get better de better pay and all that stuff. When they say in high school, get a degree, you can get a good job, they just say that. They don't say internships, even though in college they do say get more internships, the more likelihood you'll have a good job, which is true. But I mean, I would have thought that just having a degree would be enough just to get any kind of job. It's still hard to get a job. And even the jobs that I'm offered, well, they're not as good as they said they were going to be. So that's kind of shitty. Now I'm just $70,000 in student loan debt and I don't have a job. So that fucking sucks. That's another one of those uh, true facts, <laughs> sad facts. But I got a plan, so no worries. If I would have just started the workforce after I got out of high school, I probably would have been able to get any kind of job. I mean, not any kind of job, but I mean like the shitty job no one wants to get, which is why people go to college, like Burger Flipper and fast food jobs, Walmart, Target, that kind of stuff. I see people have those kind of jobs all the time, even when they're in college, which probably should have done, but I didn't really need a job when I was in college. But I guess I started making money sooner. But the point is, I could have got jobs like that without a degree. But now that I have the degree, I feel like I never get, I really, I mean, for jobs like that, I never get a response for the resumes that I send in. And I mean, my degree is pretty technical, so obviously it's not related at all. But I would think that the fact that I went to college at least says that, you know, I can do a competent job, at least for these minimum type jobs, but I guess either they're only tailoring them for the people who are, don't have any other option, which I guess is the, fa is the, f is the truth of it, but now it's like eliminates me from even getting shitty jobs, because now I can't get shitty jobs and I don't have the, I guess, experience. Which is, because like when I apply the jobs, it's always like two, three years experience. And obviously coming out of college, unless you have like maybe three years of internships, I'm not going to have any kind of experience like that. So the good jobs I can't get, and the shitty jobs I can't even get. So now I don't even know where I can stand. So it's more about, now it's like you have to lie on your resume. So like, what do you expect? I don't know if I could turn that into a joke. More even more just of the frustration of that situation. Maybe that, the anecdote of getting a degree not having the good jobs and not having shitty jobs. 
So you're fucked. I'm fucked, I guess, in a way. <laughs> Being the sympathetic character in the bit, and the audience is like laughing at my misfortune, in a way. It's just like, fucked if I do, fucked if I don't, but actually fucked if I do, go to college is the point. You know, college is the place where people say they experiment and they do drugs and sex and all that kind of stuff. But I really wasn't, I mean, I didn't drink at all. I didn't do drugs or nothing like that in college. I remember distinctly drinking from like one of those red cups, like a beer, and then when the guy turned away, like I kept it in my mouth and then I spit it out. So that was just a stupid fucking thing. It just seemed like, now in retrospect, like at the time it was like, oh, I don't want to get drunk, as if one drink is going to get me drunk. And even not even that, like why am I, not? just because I don't like the taste, it's like the point of drinking and all this drugs and stuff is to get fucked up or to like change, get out of yourself for like a little bit. And not know, I mean, not that I didn't know that, but like from the sober perspective, from everything that I was fed by parents and stuff, it was like, oh, people who only do this are depressed or people who only, people who do this kind of stuff. Oh, there's something wrong with them. The reality is, if you want to have fun, not if you want to have fun, but it does make, it is fun to do, especially with friends, and like that's who you're hanging out with anyway. So if it's like, if you have a good time, then you have a good time. So what's the difference? How you have a good time? And like, if people say, oh, you need this to have a good time. Uh, well, if people say like, oh, you need pizza to have a good party, or you need this to have a good party, then what's the difference? What's the distinction there? If you need something to have a good time, who cares what it is as long as you have a good time? If that's what the goal is to have a good time. I've said have a good time like so many times. I'm trying to think of what I such a sheltered and in a way frightened perspective of the world or just only sticking to what I learned from my parents, which is for a lot of things, I guess coming out of high school, that's all your perspective that you have. You know, religion and the way you think and all this stuff. Not that I don't carry things with me now still at 27 from my parents like maybe their morals and uh, you know lessons that they taught me but this is not even a joke well I guess I think the jokes that I got from that is maybe I like the the fact of shedding off the prejudices as generations go by so like one generation you lose racism one generation you lose the you know the war on drugs so who knows where we're gonna be in the future maybe like most recently, prejudices about homosexuality and that kind of stuff have been shed. Now people are understanding that this is not a choice and this is their lifestyle and who gives a fuck anyway? Like, it matters. Meeting people and learning about stuff like that, I learned about just various people in the world, just outside of my own world. And that understanding, that ignorance was gone, so now I'm smarter and now I know more things. So, I guess that's one of the good things of college that are not in necessarily in the class, it's just more the environment of just getting outside your own world, you educate yourself, become smarter, obviously. But it's more about the experience, so I think people should stress that more than the education, I guess. But I guess people do, but more for the socializing and partying, but just maybe the way of thinking that your way of thinking has changed. It's scary when you think about the people who just, who shelter their kids into their family their whole lives, like homeschooling, not that homeschooling is bad, but like, who don't give them the component of like outside interactions, it's kind of scary, <laughs> like just for that child, because like, they're going to be out in the world with their way of thinking, and not the fact that the way of thinking is wrong, but like, if it's not at least tested or like challenged by other points of view and still holds strong, then that's kind of like, of course it's going to be ill-informed or maybe um, out of context with reality or just with the rest of the world. It's going to be like, I think this way, I only want this way. Because that's all you've been exposed to. You don't know about anything else. But I already covered this. <sighs> People talk about going to cities and all these like urban places or... I don't mean urban like black, I just mean urban like city, big city type places and people always say, oh, there's sexual harassment and rape and all this crazy scary stuff coming from like a small town or like from where you grew up. And that's all scary. An eye-opening thing about college was, uh, there is this, or I don't know if it's a, what is the thing called? Sexual assault free environment, safe. And it was, you know, promoting like awareness about like the rapes and assaults in college 
and they're the part of their campaign. I don't know if it's in other schools too, but like wherever there be either a sexual assault on campus, there would be like a red handprint on the location. And I remember, like, I, I think I found out about SAFE probably like a few semesters in the college or quarters in the college, within the first year, I think, went to like a meeting. And uh, then like after knowing that, because I used to see those handprints around the campus and be like, what is that? Some kind of like weird art thing or somebody, that's weird that this guy with the red handprint just keeps not cleaning their hand or something. Uh, <laughs> I never thought that, but that can might be a joke I say. But a guy with a red handprint is just marking his territory. It's like a, it's like a weird graffiti artist or like bandit, some kind of, like leaving his mark. I don't know. Knowing that it meant like sexual assault, um, I'd see these handprints around campus and be like, holy shit! Why is there a red handprint in the bike rack of the library? How did somebody get assaulted here without anybody knowing? Like, like. Was the librarian not paying attention or like you'd see it like next to a vending machine and it's like what the fuck? You, like someone's just trying to get a drink and all this shit could happen it's like that's scary and like obviously if you saw the handprints around a city it'd probably be red all over maybe who knows I don't know. But I don't know anything statistic wise about rape or sexual assault. This is good, this is bad but maybe they're both bad. Maybe just like a sexual assault and rape is it's everywhere I guess. So you know. Don't hate on cities, I guess is what I'm saying. Maybe the premise for that one can be like widespread rape. <laughs> Just because that's like a shocking thing to say. A side note to that is that they had, there, this one year they changed it around where it's not red. They had pink handprints or red handprints for girls and then blue handprints for boys. And like there was more red handprints than blue ones. But whenever you see the blue one, not that you like the sexual sound. But it was almost like a, one of those four leaf clover kind of situations. It's like, oh, blue one. Which, you know, when at first, first you think... Like, oh, yeah, we got one. We got a blue. But then when you think about what it means, it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> this is bad as well, obviously. Seeing a dragonfly or seeing something you've never seen before. Like, oh, that's once in a blue moon kind of thing. Once in a blue hand kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, I think that's what I got for the premise of college. Um, that's all for this episode. Thanks. Next time.